Welcome to Home Library Book Review Children Series where we select a book right from the shelf and explain its content through easy to understand text, graphics, example and animation along with discussion with family members. Today we will be reviewing Great Stories for Children by Ruskin Bond. Hey everyone, this book is a collection of classic children's stories. It has entertaining and imaginative stories. All stories are simple and heartwarming. It has a good read rating of 4.2 out of 5. Since this book has many short stories, we will be covering few in this video and you can watch out part 2 in our upcoming videos. So stay tuned. Thank you Arna. Let's begin with the first story, a special tree. There was a little boy, Rakesh, who lived with his grandfather on the outskirts of Missouri, just where the forest began. Since there were no schools in the village where Rakesh's parents lived, they had sent him to his grandfather in Missouri. One day, Rakesh was on his way home from school when he bought the cherries. Rakesh ate all the cherries and he kept the last seed in his mouth for some time. Are cherry seeds lucky? He asked his grandfather. Of course, he replied. Grandfather told him to plant it. So Rakesh found a small space and began to dig up a flower bed. He pressed the seed into the soil with his thumb and it went right in. Two seasons went by. One morning in the garden, he bent to pick up what he thought was a small twig and found to his surprise that it was well rooted. It was four inches tall. He looked at the twig every morning, but it did not seem to be growing very fast. So he stopped looking at it. That year, the monsoon rain came early. After about two weeks, the cherry plant was about two feet high when a goat entered the garden and ate all the leaves. Only the main stem and two thin branches remained. Towards the end of rainy season, new leaves appeared on the tree. By the time summer came round again, it had sent out several new shoots with tender green leaves. That monsoon, Rakesh went home to his village to help his parents. When he came back to grandfather's house at the end of rains, he saw that cherry tree had grown another foot. One day, he found bright green praying mantis on a branch. It was cherry tree's first visitor. The next visitor was a hairy caterpillar who started making a meal of the leaves. Rakesh removed it quickly. He said, come back when you're a butterfly. Winter came early. The cherry tree bent low with the weight of snow. Towards February, it was Rakesh's ninth birthday and the cherry tree was as tall as him. One morning, grandfather gazed at the tree and called Rakesh quickly to see a pale pink blossom at the end of branch. 
the following year there were more blossoms and suddenly the tree was taller than rakesh in the cherry tree the bees came to feed on the nectar in the blossoms and tiny birds pecked at the blossoms and broke them off that summer there were small cherries on the tree it's too sour rakesh said they should be better next year on a warm sunny afternoon rakesh lay down on the grass beneath the tree he gazed up through the leaves at the great blue sky and turning on his side he could see the mountains striding away into the clouds he said what's so special about this tree why do we like it so much grandfather replied because we planted it ourselves that's why it's special just one small seed and he touched the smooth bark of the tree that he had grown he put his finger at the tip of a leaf and whispered is this what it feels to be god wow mom such a heartwarming story I would also plant one seed and see it grow every day. That's very nice. Let's move on to the next story of this book. The wind on the haunted hill. On the slopes of the next hill was a village. There lived three kids. 11 years old, Usha her younger brother suresh and usha's friend binya slightly older than her they sat down sunbathing and staring across fields at the ruins on the haunted hill usha had to go to bazaar and suresh wanted to accompany her but she refused he said won't you feel scared returning alone there are ghosts on the haunted hill she said i will return before dark ghosts don't appear during the day usha tells suresh and binya that her grandfather says that over a hundred years ago some britishers lived on the hill but the settlement was always being struck by lightning so they moved away binya asked but if they left why is the place visited by ghosts usha replied because grandfather says during a terrible storm one of the houses was hit by lightning and everyone in it was killed even the children a boy and his sister grandfather saw them playing there in the moonlight tell us more arna usha set out for bazaar she bought all her stuff and realized that dark clouds had gathered over the mountains the wind had dropped trees were still sky had darkened and a deep rumble echoed over the hills first heavy drop of rain hit her cheek she started running faster night had fallen there was another flash of lightning usha remembered part of an old roof that would give some shelter usha placed her hands flat against a stone wall and moved sideways 
hoping to reach sheltered corner. Suddenly, her hand touched something soft and she gave a startled cry. Her cry was answered by another half snarl, half screech as something leapt away. Crouched in a corner, she found some shelter. Her clothes were soaked and water streamed down from her hair. She heard a faint cry again, maybe of a cat. Then the storm blotted out all other sounds. There was no time to think of ghosts, but now she was settled in one place. Thunder bloomed and lightning came. Thank you, Adam. There was a big flash, a streak of blue sizzle along the floor of the building. Usha was staring straight ahead and as the opposite wall lit up, she saw crouching in front of the unused fireplace two small figures of children. The ghostly figures seemed to look up and stare back at Usha and then everything was dark again. She had seen without doubt two ghosts on the other side of the room. She ran towards a big gap in the wall. She was halfway across when someone fell against her. Usha stumbled, got up and again bumped into something. She gave a frightened scream. Someone else also screamed. And then there was a shout, a boy's shout. And Usha instantly recognized the voice. Suresh, Usha, Binya, they fell into each other's arms, so surprised and relieved that all they could do was laugh and giggle and repeat each other's name. Then Usha said, I thought you were ghosts. Suresh also said, we thought you were ghosts. They huddled together in the corner, chattering with excitement and relief. Suresh and Binya came looking for Usha when it grew dark. The storm continued, but they were not afraid now. After an hour, the rain stopped and they started heading back to the village. When they were some distance away, Usha looked back and said, Can you see something behind the wall? It's like a hand waving. Goodbye, goodbye, they heard voices. Who said goodbye? Or was it just the wind? What an imaginative story, mom. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe. Also press on the bell notification button for more videos like these. Until next time, take care and bye.